Good morning, folks. We've got a look at some storms. It's time to check in on global modeling of sun and earth that isn't doing so well, and of course, a look at space weather, or lack thereof. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, where 193 angstroms really doesn't look so calm, does it? Two bright active regions, dark coronal holes, but obviously there are no flashes of solar flares and we don't see any ejecta. The umbral magnetic field groups are fairly good sized and we have the setup we'd normally expect from complex groupings, but there aren't actually any sunspots beneath them. Disk is back to blank, which is why the X-ray flux of solar flaring is flatlined. And while not flatlined, the solar wind is barely any less calm. Geomagnetic conditions very quiet as well. And that's because the southernmost leading coronal hole actually missed us with its solar wind, meaning we look to tonight into tomorrow for impact from that northern portion, the one trailing southward once again as it wraps left around the limb. Off night storm-wise for the U.S., you can see that especially in the spread, sparse lightning concentrations through the evening. But up in New England, it was a different story and it climaxed much earlier, midday, as that line ran across the tinier states of the Union. Tornado dropped on Massachusetts, leaving considerable damage to infrastructure. This risk is shifting high to the Midwest tonight. Let's peek in on some struggles. Turns out the current cutoff models are not accurately describing energetic particle risk to satellites in high Earth orbit. Radiation from solar storms can reach that technology quite easily, and the profile shifts throughout the storm. Meanwhile, the six-year CME forecasting challenge for the top scientists there has come up with the conclusion that no improvement in CME impact forecasting has occurred in those six years. Splendid. And folks, for all the proper electromagnetic pre-seismic anomalies we know about, it is critical we begin to constrain the best ones versus the ones that don't work. I am happy to see confirmation that ozone anomalies are not a good signal because I was honestly 50-50 on it when I made the choice to leave it out of our model in 2016. As we peek in on forecast tracks for the East and then the West Pacific, remember that these tracks tell us a lot about the global electric circuit and what Earth layer is the short-term ceiling. Video from last night, linked below, tying together the weather and solar magnetism to explain why the earthquakes are going to be far worse the last few months of the year compared to these first seven or eight of 2018. Definitely check that out if you missed it last night. It is linked for you right below in the video description box. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.